Well, good afternoon. How's everyone doing today? Bright, sunny day, a little breezy. We are so delighted that you're here. Uh, for 42 years, Michigan State University's Office for Inclusion and Intercultural Initiatives, and here's a news flash, that name is changing. It is Office for Institutional Diversity and Inclusion, OIDI, the Office for Institutional Diversity and Inclusion. So they have for the last 42 years organized a week-long series celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I am also pleased and proud that the College of Music has participated for many of those years with this annual concert. Thank you, Rodney Whitaker. Good afternoon. My name is Jim Forger, Dean of the College of Music, and I welcome you once again to jazz, spirituals, prayers, and protest, our contribution to the celebration of Dr. King. It is so wonderful to have been able to greet many of you and to see you in person. Here we are together, all safe and sound, vaccinated, masked up. We appreciate uh, you coming and taking care of yourselves and your neighbors, and this is a great community, and I'm, I'm filled with joy to be with you here today. Uh, it seems fitting on this occasion to welcome, uh, to recognize uh, the recent passing on December 26, 2021, not too long ago, of Archbishop Desmond Tutu at the age of 90. He devoted his life to creating racial justice in South Africa and well beyond, and was a leader of the anti-apartheid movement, as you well know. In fact, Archbishop Tutu had a strong connection to and impact on Michigan State University. Inspired in part by his work encouraging this divestments in corporations operating in South Africa, a distinguished African-American sociologist, urban affairs professor, and director of MSU's African Diaspora Research Project named Ruth Sims Hamilton led apartheid protests on the MSU campus. One result of the protests was the return in 1978 of the naming gift of McGough Theater which is now Wharton Center's Pizant Theater because of the financial connections in South Africa. It also uh, resulted in uh, this institution being one of the first large public institutions to divest in investments in corporations that uh, financially supported South Africa. Before her passing in 2003, Dr. Hamilton exemplified Archbishop Tutu's active leadership, which itself carried the legacy of Dr. King as it relates to peaceful, nonviolent resistance. She was a force on campus as well as an excellent mentor to many, including me and including Rodney Whitaker. Years later, Bishop Tutu gave the 2009 spring commencement speech at MSU and received an honorary doctorate of humane letters. I had the great privilege of meeting him during his time on campus, and with that personal connection, grew my appreciation of his life's work even more. Like Dr. King, Archbishop Tutu was a disciple of nonviolence, believing that one could change the world through peace and reconciliation, not through violence and revenge. Both were trailblazers for civil rights, and both are Nobel Peace Prize winners, King as the youngest winner in 1964, and Tutu 20 years later in 1984. Archbishop Tutu noted in an interview with journalist Charlene Hunter Galt that he and Dr. King were both fighting for social justice, but the difference was that the United States had a constitution that allegedly provided these fundamental rights, while those rights were not present in the Constitution of South Africa. He was an insightful human being, fully dedicated to his mission. Of all the writings and remembrances of Archbishop Tutu following his passing last month, one in particular resonated with me the most. 
Written for the New York Times by globally renowned scholar of race, religion, and contemporary culture, Michael Eric Dyson. It explains that restorative justice is a process that holds offenders accountable for their actions and gives offenders an opportunity to address the harm that they have caused and to earn back trust. And most powerfully, I believe, is Dr. Dyson's assertion that forgiveness is integral to achieving this goal. He writes, unmerited forgiveness is a powerful gesture in the process known as restorative justice. The act of seeking accountability from wrongdoers, elevating truth and understanding over punishment and vengeance, and allowing the victims to act as forces of morality by practicing acceptance, absolution, and mercy. Forgiveness is not a weak ethical response to grave dangers, Dr. Dyson continues. It is a calculated effort to ward off moral harm by anticipating the destructive impact of unforgiving attitudes behavior, and actions. While differences, strife, and divisions related to racial inequities and inappropriate and hurtful behavior around our country, in our state, as well as locally, and on our campus, it is necessary to correct and take appropriate action in the case of unacceptable, violent, unlawful, as well as day-to-day -day hurtful actions that harm others. Ultimately, Dr. Dyson's article, uh, Remarks Made uh, on This Concert and All the Events Coordinated This Week, are in their essence praise for the tenacity, leadership, and lifelong commitment of those striving for social justice. People such as Dr. King, Archbishop Tutu, and Professor Hamilton have shown us the way to bring people together. With leadership from people such as our new colleague and MSU's Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer, Dr. Jabbar Bennett, scholars like Dr. Dyson, and so many others, we can all follow their example, which we need to do now more than ever. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. This concert is always one of the highlights of our year, and I will close my comments with one more quote from Dr. Dyson's article. He said, with Dr. King and Archbishop Tutu as our guides, we can reclaim moral ground and preserve our humanity while achieving the highest form of justice possible. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure uh, to introduce MSU's Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer, Dr. Jabbar R. Bennett. Good afternoon. And thank you, Dean Forger, for your inspiring words and for your leadership and vision that have truly shaped and grown the College of Music for decades. I'd also like to thank University Distinguished Professor of Jazz Studies and Director of the MSU Jazz Studies Program, Rodney Whitaker, and his students for sharing their talents with us today in musical interpretations of spirituals, prayer and protest, and a huge thank you to Patrick McFarlane for your sponsorship of today's event and making it available to the Michigan State community and broader community, both here in person and also streaming live. So good afternoon again. All right, let's make sure you're awake. So as you heard, my name is Jabbar Bennett, and I serve as Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer here at Michigan State University. And today, I'm wearing an additional hat, Master of Ceremony. Yeah. I actually like the sound of that, too. <laughs> So I'm eager uh, to, to enjoy the specially curated performance that we have today by virtuoso and artist in residence at Michigan State, Damian Sneed. Yes, you can clap. <laughs> Along with the MSU Jazz Orchestra One, featuring guest conductor Charles Tolliver's arrangement and our esteemed colleague bassist, Rodney Whitaker. So my remarks today will be brief. I think you heard earlier from Dean Forger's comments that this marks the 42nd year 
that Michigan State University has honored uh, the life and legacy of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And we've done this in partnership with the College of Music. It was nearly 57 years ago, on February 11th, 1965, when Dr. Martin Luther King actually came to Michigan State University and spoke on campus. He, he came because Michigan State at that time was calling for action programs, addressing a packed and overflow, overflowing auditorium of nearly 4,000 students. By this time, back in 1965, Dr. King was already the youngest person ever to receive a Nobel Peace Prize, and he came to our campus to support the student enrichment program, stressing our social obligations and appealing to, and I quote the moderator, new idealism of our generation. And he was referring to the students of that day. But I think that's fitting for students of today as well. New ideas and challenging old ones too. Three years later in 1968, the very first iteration of my office was formed. And in the early years, our work really focused on meeting local and federal compliance regulations related to recruitment and hiring. But today, the Office for Institutional Diversity and Inclusion, and I will note this is a new name that officially launches tomorrow. Um, we do all the things that I talked about before that we did more than 50 years ago, but we also work to really help increase diversity promote inclusion, ensure equity, but also enhance outreach and engagement. So tomorrow in the MLK holiday, there are actually two major reasons to celebrate. My office's new name, as well as Dr. King's birthday. <laughs> so back in 1968, tragedy also struck. When Dr. King, as many of you know, who we recognize as the spiritual leader of the civil rights movement, he was murdered on April 4th at the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. The Michigan State community is fortunate to have had an opportunity to engage with Dr. King just a few years before his untimely death. And his presence, no doubt, helped to illuminate the inequities faced by many on our campus and encourage this institution to do better and be better on behalf of all Spartans. And now, it is truly my pleasure to introduce and welcome Damien Sneed. As a multi-genre recording artist and instrumentalist, Damien is a pianist, vocalist, organist, composer, conductor, arranger, producer, arts educator, who has engaged very broad and diverse audiences throughout his career. How many of you have those many titles to your name? Exactly, that, that's why he's here today. Damien has worked with jazz, classical, pop, and R&B legends such as the late Aretha Franklin and Jesse Norman. In addition, he has worked with Wynton Marcellus, Stevie Wonder, Diana Ross, Ashford and Simpson, and many, many others. Damien has served as a musical director for Grammy award-winning gospel artists, has been commissioned to create original scores and operas, and is a frequently invited guest to serve as a composer in residence and conductor among numerous other achievements. Sneed is also a faculty member at the Manhattan School of Music, where he teaches graduate level courses in conducting in African American music history, and oversees a singer-songwriter ensemble as well as, as a gospel music ensemble. And he even joined our esteemed faculty here at Michigan State as artist in residence for the 2020-2021 academic year. And while Sneed was here, he worked with the Wharton Center and the College of Music to help bring social impact programming to both units while advancing progress and advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion. Sneed will conduct his residency by performing Our Song, Our Story on Tuesday, January 18th, at 7.30 p.m. at the Wharton Center. So be sure to check that out. And now, without further ado, please help me welcome composer, pianist, and much, much more, Damien Sneed.
freedom Oh, oh freedom Thank you so much. That was my arrangement that I just arranged just now just for you all. I've never done it that way. That was Oh Freedom. Uh, it's a uh, well-known civil rights song as well as a protest song and reconciliation song. So the title of this uh, performance is Jazz, Spirituals, Prayer, and Protest. So I see that one of the first selections that the ensemble will perform is by my mentor who connects me and your phenomenal distinguished professor, Rodney Whitaker, and that is my mentor, Wynton Marsalis. So I'd like to uh, do my own arrangement of Wynton's uh, The Lord's Prayer. Everybody's heard The Lord's Prayer. People sing it at, at weddings and funerals and other places. But I had an opportunity to work with Wynton conducting his Abyssinian Mass. And this is for chorus, but I'm going to do it uh, as a solo piece just for you all. The Lord's Prayer by Wynton Marsalis from his uh, work, The Abyssinian Mass.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us deliver So another spiritual I do a lot of places is one of my mother's favorites, and this is uh, something that I think you'll recognize. I'll just do a little bit of it. Trouble. He looks 
like and it's real like God's gonna trouble the walk You give yourselves a hand. Uh, so this next song I'd like to do um, is a spiritual that's usually done by classical singers, but driving up here in the snow from Detroit Airport, it starts snowing, then no snow at all. I thought this would be appropriate. Uh, during the civil rights era, a lot of the music of the church of the black church, the African-American church experience, songs would be interchangeable. Like they'd say, I've been buked and I've been scorned. They'd sing songs and they'd replace the words saying, no jail cell will hold me. Of course, we know the great song, We Shall Overcome. So I'm gonna combine We Shall Overcome in this other spiritual, it's called Guide My Feet While I Run This Race. in vain 
this race oh, 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 oh. my hand Lord while I run this race oh, oh, oh my hand Lord while I So I'll say amen. 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 I say so be whatever I go through for unity and peace for everyone amen I'll sing amen not forget Martin Luther King and so many others that went before us not just in history and aesthetics and principles but let us love everybody no matter what they look like no matter where they're from no matter how they speak no matter what's wrong with them let it be real Thank you. That's called taking it to church. So, uh, before I leave, I'd like to welcome two great professors and great musicians. I was privileged to uh, watch this great bassist play when I was at Howard University. So he's mentored me from afar. He's worked and traveled all over this world. And he's a distinguished professor here. You're very fortunate and privileged to have the great Rodney Whitaker who's over the Jazz Studies Department. He's coming out on bass. And also, a phenomenal jazz legend, Randy Gillespie, on drums. So we had an opportunity through the Wharton Center and your local PBS affiliate station to uh, do some recordings dealing with protest, reconciliation, and we decided to incorporate this today for this last song that I'm going to do. This is a song actually written by the great jazz pianist Billy Taylor, but it really became to popular knowledge by the great Nina Simone, who was an artist who made sure people who didn't have a voice had a voice. That's what we're talking about with John Coltrane and Winston Marsalis, and Charles Tolliver will be coming out as well as they present Africa Brass. But this song simply says, I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. So let's make it a church service or a large community group, you can feel free to clap. You can co-sign, as Winton would say. That means you can respond. You can say yes. You can scream. You can do whatever you want to do. If you want to stand up and dance, you can do that as well. I gave you permission. All right. So we're all one big group here, and we're going to do this song. This is I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel to Be Free. Give a hand again for Randy Gillespie on drums, your professor. 
and the great Wadi Whitaker. Thank you all, and I'll see everybody on Tuesday, right? Okay. I knew how it would feel to be free. I wish I could break all of the chains holding me. I wish I could say all of the things I want to say. I'd say it loud, say it clear for the whole wild world to hear. Let's take it up. I could share all the things that's in my heart. I'd remove all the bars that keep us apart. I wish you could know how it feels to agree that every man and every woman, every created being should be free. Let's take it up. to give I wish I could live like I'm longing to live I wish I could do all the things that I want to do I'd be starting anew if you help me to be true It up. Well, I wish I could be like a bird in the sky. How sweet it would be yeah, if I knew I could fly. I'd soar to the sun, oh, and I'd look down at the sea. Here we go. I'd sing it loud. I'd sing it loud. Say it loud, I sing it clear for the whole world to hear because I'm free. Thank you very much. Rodney Whitaker, Randy Gillespie, I'm Damian Sneed. So what do you think about that? Not sure, there we go. That was amazing. That was amazing. So now we have the opportunity to hear from, we first had a solo, then we had a trio, but now we're actually gonna hear from the entire Michigan State University Jazz Orchestra One. And I have the pleasure, yeah, you can clap again. Yeah, clap. And I have the pleasure of giving a, a formal introduction to one of the gentlemen who you saw here, uh, guest conductor Charles Tolliver. So Charles Tolliver began his professional career and simultaneously his recording career debut 
with the saxophone giant Jackie McLean on Blue Note Records in 1964. Yeah. Since then, Tolliver has become one of the all-time preeminent trumpeters in jazz, as well as one of its most gifted composer, arranger, band leaders. He also has been Grammy nominated for his Blue Notes record recording, With Love. With a career that has spanned five decades, he has recorded and or performed with such renowned artists as Roy Haynes, Hank Mobley, Willie Bobo, Horace Silver, McCoy Tyner, Sonny Rollins, Booker Irvin, Gary Bartz, Gerald Wilson Orchestra, Oliver Nelson, Stanley Cowell, Herbie Hancock, Andrew Hill, Lewis Hayes, Roy Ayers, one of my favorites, Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers, and owned the trumpet chair with the great Max Roach for some years. At this time, please help me welcome Michigan State University Jazz Orchestra One and guest conductor Charles Tolliver.
Good afternoon. How y'all doing? How about a round of applause for MSU Jazz Orchestra One? So we're, we're playing a big jazz competition in April in New York, the Rudin competition, and this is our competition piece. So we wanted to try it out out there. So if you send us an email, let us know what you think. How about a round of applause? Oh, thank you, thank you. You can clap. How about keeping your hands together for our dynamic guest artist, Mr. Charles Tolliver.
Thank you.
This was truly an exhilarating celebration of African-American history, legacy, and pride through song. Let's give MSU Orchestra One another hand. So in closing, I'd like to just uh, share a few thank yous and a, and a very few short remarks, but I do want to acknowledge Dean Forger, Professor Whitaker, Damian Sneed, Charles Tolliver, and again, the MSU Jazz Orchestra One and the College of Music for putting on such a fantastic performance today. And again, through the music that we heard and the songs that were performed, we honored the struggle, we acknowledged the strength, and we truly celebrated the success of African American community and also the promise of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. And for our audience and viewers who are live streaming, I thank you for attending. And I invite you to join President Stanley and I tomorrow from 3 to 4.30 p.m. for this year's MLK Community Conversation, which will take place virtually. And we'll have foundational associate professor of African American and African Studies, Dr. Tamura Lomax, giving a keynote address. You can find more information at the Office for Institutional Diversity and Inclusion website. And with that, thank you for sharing time with us today. Stay safe, keep warm, and have a great evening.